so I want to follow up the uh, video that I did about changing out the spread clutch. It's a very, still a relevant video, except there's now been an upgrade um, from Skytrax with a basically a friction clutch. So it's using the same spread, but we, we've applied, or he's designed a, a, a friction plate that puts a little bit of pressure on that clutch, which should kind of calm it down its movement a little bit. And then he's also um, used one of these washers that comes with the clutch in its normal application, which is in a turbo 400 transmission. And basically what that does is it grabs this inner ring and the outer ring with the inset in the washer and it holds them from moving around. And we're thinking that's most likely what's causing some of the wear on that clutch is the fact that these rings um, weren't being used in, the, in his application and those two circles or two races were moving around. So by using one of these washers, it's going to hold that clutch um, concentric at all times. What I did is I removed the gear set that was in there and I did take this apart just to check it and everything. The clutch is fine. So, you know, I changed this about 30 flight hours ago. We removed those clips. Um, looks fine. There's no, no problem with it whatsoever. Um, but I do want to try this new setup. So this is the old setup. You can see that the front is a little different. You can see the C-clip and um, the back. You can look through and see the Sprague clutch inside there. This is the inner gear, a brass um, bushing, and then the outer gear. So that's the old one with the old spacer. Now the new one, here's your new spacer and it's machined so it has this lip. And these are called Belleville washers and they've got a little concave to them so it's a spring washer those will set in there and then we're going to crank down the uh, gear set on top of those and that puts pressure down on it and in order to get that pressure lined up right i'm soaking it all in atf so this is dripping it has this shim that goes on there too so we're going to put that shim in there and that will stand off the gear set from those belleville washers just a little bit now, here's the new gear set. I'll hold it over the bucket. So you can see the backside looks about the same. You can look in and see the spread clutch. And you can actually see, if you look closely, you guys not, may not be able to see it, but that washer that holds the spread clutch is actually what you see on the back. Now, on the front side, it's totally different. It's got the friction clutch plate. The inner piece, this inner race gear, is comes out and it's machined to this whole fr friction clutch plate. So we're going to put down, put pressure down on that. It's going to squeeze it together um, using those Belleville washers. So we're going to basically preload them because it is a spring and it will take a bit to wear it in. So at first it's going to be kind of stiff. And from what I've heard from the other guys who are trying this is it takes a couple runs to get it to loosen up so that very first start is a little abrupt but after that as this friction plate wears in it will get better um, so i'm waiting for uh, uh my wife to get back with some loctite and then um, i don't know what happened to my loctite but you put loctite on this nut then this nut goes on here at 150 foot pounds and then we'll go put it back on the plane so it's really that simple you just take this nut off remove the gear set that's in there, put the new gear set back in, or the, yeah, put the new gear set back in, torque it down, put it back on the plane. So this is a really easy uh, change, guys, to do. As long as you have a way to mount the flange to your workbench, heat up that nut, use, I just used this time, I got this new electric impact driver for Christmas. Thank you, Dad. And uh, use that with the, what size is it? Uh, two inch socket on it and that takes that nut right off so to put it back on we'll use that socket and a torque wrench 150 foot pounds um, to click that on there and with the loctite that will keep everything in place so just waiting on that loctite and then we'll be good to go and we'll go down and test it out and that prop will no longer freewheel like it used to which will have some real benefits mostly like when you're parking in a heavy wind you no longer have the prop wanting to take off on you um, but it also should change some of the flight characteristics a little bit. When you reduce power, 
that prop's going to slow down with the engine a little bit better. So anyway, that's pretty much it. Quick change, probably be a quick video, but we'll get it out there, we'll test it, and I'll give you some opinions of how it flies and, and uh, if I can tell any difference. Uh, good morning. I'm going to go ahead and reinstall the front half of the gearbox after changing out that clutch. So I'll grab the parts and we'll get to it. Alright guys, so that's pretty much it. Uh, it's back on. Everything's torqued. Props on. Full fluid. You can see how much <clears throat> harder it is to turn it. I put quite a bit of force on there before I just freewheel. So that's the difference of that friction clutch. Is it's, it's putting some force on that to hold the prop so it will no longer freewheel out in the uh, wind. And when we shut down that thing's going to stop. Now it's fully tight right now because it hasn't broke in. So it's probably about, I don't know, 30 to 35 foot pounds if you were to put a uh, torque wrench on it and try to spin the hub. Um, as that wears in, that should drop down to right about 15 to 18 foot pounds of pressure to get the, the prop to spin. And uh, that's about where we want it. So the first couple starts and runs, it's gonna be really tight. So as it loosens up, and get it'll get better. So uh, I'm going to put the cowlings back on, and um, depending on the weather, we'll hopefully get a chance to test it out. All right, guys. So I got the uh, new clutch installed. Everything's set, torqued, ready to go. So this will be the first startup. So I want to film it starting up just to see if there's any difference, if you hear any different sounds or anything. Um, so I'll do that. We'll run it up, get it warm, and uh, then we're going to go out and flight test it. Okay, here we go for this first start with this gearbox. No problem. I always feel like it's a little bit quieter uh, during the warm up at this lower RPM. Before it would kind of chatter a little bit, especially if you got out of the aircraft and stood next to it without any ear protection on, you could hear kind of a rattle noise. That's gone away. And I think what that is, that, that clutch was just doing this in there a little bit, having that friction plate on there. It seems to have stopped that, which is great. So it's not getting any vibration and no chatter going on at all during this warm up. So I'm, I'm pretty excited to see if this is a real solid solution it seems to be so far so so far so good let's go fly this puppy i ran into a couple friends out here at red buff as my mail recognizes one of the airplanes we're gonna go do a little plan here. So, still testing out these slats, and uh, also the new clutch on the on the uh, gearbox. I did uh, finish up the test phase, so I'm back into going uh, phase two. Are we going a little bit far north, or?
All right, guys, I'm gonna wrap this one up right here. I'm pretty excited about the upgrade to the SkyDrive gearbox. Uh, I wanna thank Teal for continuing to innovate and push forward on solutions for the Yamaha engines. I think this is a great upgrade. I look forward to getting more flight time on it, and uh, hopefully we'll see that it holds up much better than the original setup. Um, so thank you, Teal, appreciate that. Uh, I also wanna thank Trent Palmer for that air-to-air -air footage. Uh, it was really fun doing that with, with Trent and Ty. It was fun to see them and do some flying out on, in, uh, on the river and uh, see how he does that is, is pretty amazing. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. It was amazing, amazing footage. Um, we also just passed 18,000 subscribers. So if you have hit that subscribe button, I appreciate it. And if you haven't, please do show me that you like these videos by hitting that subscribe button. And uh, if you like this one, hit the like, share it with a friend, and we'll see you on the next one.